This is Shinsi from Nasi Mandra. I hope all you watched our previous classes regarding the neurological disorders, autoimmune disorders regarding multiple sclerosis. So today we are going to discuss regarding the autoimmune disorders continuation that is Guillain-Barre syndrome. Before going to that, I would like to suggest you uh, regarding the channel. Please subscribe this channel to get the updated videos and also share to your friends and nursing colleagues. Why I am telling this means it will helpful for all of your nursing colleagues, those who are practicing for the prometric exams or NCLEX exam, CRNA exam, it will be helpful for them. So, please subscribe the channel and press the bell button to get the updated videos. Now, today's class, we are going to discuss regarding Golden Virus Syndrome. So, what is Golden Virus Syndrome? We have discussed the myelinate myelination T uh, sheath problems, demyelinating problems we have discussed that is multiple sclerosis. Same like here also, Golden Barre syndrome, it affects the nerve fibers. Mainly the multiple sclerosis, it is affected in the central nervous system. But here, Golden Barre syndrome, it is affecting to the peripheral nervous system and the cranial nerves. That is the difference between both of these. syndrome it is as we know that it is an autoimmune disorders so the immune activity that immune reactions of our own body cells it is causing the problems to the myelin sheath or myelin fibers nerve fibers so what will happen here same like multiple sclerosis here also demyelination is happening here so that is this is exposed to nerve fiber so here it is auto antibodies creating and it is attacking to the myelin sheath and causing the demyelination so damaged myelin sheath you can see in this picture so this is the um, problem happening in this um, Golden Barre syndrome but in multiple sclerosis central nervous system is affecting that means the brain and spinal cord but in Golden Barre syndrome the, this nerve fibers to the peripheral nervous system and the cranial nerves it is affecting so in this here here we can see the clinical features it is mainly based on this um, nerve fibers like muscle fibers which is supplying to the arms uh, extremities and all uh, to the chest towards uh, diaphragm and all this is uh, happening here so we can go detail regard we can uh, just see it is an autoimmune disease which has it already discussed like it is um, attacks the peripheral nervous system and the cranial nerves so myelin sheath of the peripheral nervous system it is attacking so peripheral nervous system it is having two functions first function is somatic function somatic function means it controls the voluntary functions of the body and autonomic function means it controls the involuntary functions of the body also the peripheral nervous system is having somatic and autonomic functions uh, is there so this condition is usually usually irreversible it will not reverse so it is irreversible consists of both the motor and the sensory symptoms there will be motor symptoms will be there and also the sensory symptoms will be there in this condition gbs and it is always preceded by upper respiratory tract infections and uh, gastroenteritis campylobacter uh, digenae is the main organism we can see in gastroenteritis and upper respiratory tract infections so always it is important uh, for you to ask the patient whether they have any attack of respiratory illness in the past two weeks and any gastrointestinal infections or any other body system any infection you have to take a detailed medical history from the patient and um, so GBS that means we can say that gradual block of sensation so gradual block of sensation will be there in GBS. So signs and symptoms mainly we can uh, we can say that bulbar symptoms. 
so in bulbar symptoms what is bulbar sim- symptom there will be four these will be there first day it is dysphagia so difficulty in swallowing dysphagia will be the then dysphonia dysphonia means difficulty in articulating the sound difficulty in speaking okay and this arthria that also difficulty in speaking we can say and dysphagia difficulty in swallowing okay everything will be there in the like for the bulbar symptoms will be there and um, we can say in this condition there is a respiratory compromise patient will uh, tell you patient is having the shortness of breath and uh, breathing difficulty uh, the increase in the respiration or decrease for hypoventilation everything they can uh, tell you and finally uh, it is leads to the respiratory failure why it is happening means the nerve fiber which is uh, leading to the diaphragm this um, demyelination is affecting to that nerve, nerve fiber and will cause the weakness of the respiratory muscles so respiratory failure can be happen here and there is a important thing is uh, the paralysis paralysis of the extremities paralysis how it is happening means in golden barrier syndrome we can see ascending paralysis what is ascending from down to up we can say downwards down to upwards the progression of this disease symptoms we can see in this golden barrier syndrome so if the patient is having pain or tingling sensation numbness in the lower extremities so it is uh, descending um, as, sorry it is ascending upwards it is first initially it is starting in the feet then it is going towards the chest and neck so that is ascending paralysis we, that is a classical sign of golden barrier syndrome so if anybody is asking you what is the classical signs of uh, golden barrier syndrome it is ascending paralysis and uh, regarding the uh, when you are uh, doing the assessment you can say there is a deep tendon reflex the activities tendon reflexes are decreased so decreased deep tendon reflexes you can see in this condition and regarding the diplopia double vision that is a double vision will be there then paralysis starts from already we discussed like the paralysis it is start from the lower extremity gradually progressing to upper extremity finally it will leads to the respiratory failure so pain hypersensitivity when body is stretched so more uh, the patient will be more sensible to the towards the pain uh, or extreme temperature everything so the hypersensitivity will be there then as we discussed in multiple sclerosis the patient is having bowel and bladder dysfunction is there same like uh, uh, multiple sclerosis here also the patient is having bowel and bladder dysfunction incontinence dribbling okay, retention everything will be there for bowel and bladder how uh, we can diagnose this up to now we have seen what are the symptoms more than this more symptoms are there but uh, everything it is related this paresthesia numbness tingling sensation of this extremities everything is there or the breathing problems will be there related to the weakness of the diaphragm or a weakness of the ophthalmic nerve it is uh, causing the vision problems or we discussed now so how we can diagnose the golden barrier syndrome so now we can go through the diagnostic measures for this golden barrier syndrome so here we can say we can do the lumbar puncture in lumbar puncture Uh, we can see the csf analysis there will be elevated level of proteins and albumin but the normal wbc level will be normal in this case that is the main diagnostic finding we can identify this golden barrier syndrome and also we can do the electromyography and nerve conduction studies ecg in ecg also some variations will be there nerve conduction study the slow uh, studies like means uh, the conduction nerve conduction will be slow progression we can see in and for the respiratory system we can do the pulmonary function test these are the tests we can uh, see do in this um, golden barrier syndrome and the management the management mainly we have to focus on the respiratory support respiratory management as we know that it is uh, mainly it is causing problems to the respiration because of the weakness of the diaphragm so the ventilator support is required for the assistive devices for the breathing is required then uh, maybe intubation is required in the final stages and all then tracheostomy set has to be kept at 
the bed side or bed side always we have to keep the tracheostomy set and the medication wise we are providing iv immunoglobulin um, and the patient is have i told that the patient is more sensitive to towards the pain so we have to administer the analgesics then anti hypertensives if the patient is having hypertension uh, we have to provide the anti hypertensives so always patient is more sensible towards the pain try to give the avoid the ring like wrinkles in the bed so provide wrinkle free bed then mainly we have to focus on the safety precautions because numbness paresthesias everything is there so we have to focus on the safety of the patient immunosuppressants and immunomodulators we can provide to the patient this condition it is um, like uh, it can be curable only 5 percentage uh, death rate can be occur in this cases uh, 70% it will be cure remaining 25% uh, it is like uh, on and off like that the demyelination uh, or uh, what will happen means after the medication after the supportive there is a remyelination of this myelin sheath will be happening once the myelin sheath is okay then everything will be fine the patient will be cured so we have to focus to remyelinate the myelin sheath nursing management mainly we have to assess the patient for pain and the pain medication we have to provide uh, cardiac monitoring uh, sometimes there is a bradycardia sometimes tachycardia so rhythm can be changed you have to focus on the um, uh, cardiac system so assess uh, do the cardiac monitoring elevate bed and uh, to 30 um, degree at night to reduce orthostatic hypotension so there is a chance for orthostatic hypotension we have to reduce the uh, sorry we have to elevate the bed head end to 30 degree elevation so for this respiratory support we have to provide the patent airway oxygenation ventilator support intubation everything we have to provide and chest physiotherapy also we have to provide in this case and other nursing management it is assess for the gag reflex and the swallow reflex you have to assess so these are the nursing management for the golden barrier syndrome so i think you all are clear regarding the golden barrier syndrome don't worry it is easy topic everybody is uh, thinking that the neurological system it is very difficult so but actually it is easy once we understood the concept it will be easy for you so the thing is here uh, golden barrier syndrome there will be ascending paralysis will be there from down to upwards the paralysis is happening and mainly for you have to focus on the respiration so and the gag reflex uh, aspiration respiration everything you have to pro- provide the ventilator support this are the management i hope all you understood regarding this uh, golden barrier syndrome if you have any doubts or any clarification you need please uh, down please comment in my uh, below sections of my videos uh, please subscribe this channel to get the updated videos regarding this all system.